Um, we are here to talk about, of course, um, what happened 30 years ago, but also look at it, most importantly, perhaps unlike the first hour, from the perspective of young people, young Sikhs, young British Punjabis, Sikh and Hindu, and how they feel 1984 has shaped their life. And also, quite importantly, look into and investigate whether there is a rift between the older generation and the younger generation, with the younger generation perhaps frustrated at the lack of progress, and the older generation worried about what they may feel is increased anger and frustration and perhaps even separation. So we will go into that. I do want to hear from you as well. If you're a young British Sikh, Sikh Punjabi or Hindu Punjabi listening to the BBC Asian Network right now, I'd be very interested to know what you think about 1984 and how it has affected you and your family. Before that, let's speak to Jazz, not her real name. She is from Leicester. She called in. Um, good afternoon to you, Jazz. Hi, Yal. What would you right. like to say? First of all, my family were involved inside the Gurdwara at that time. Now, people haven't been able to talk about what was going on inside the Gurdwara. My family were obviously then removed from the Gurdwara under the um, underground. There was weapons there, yes, we all admit that, but the weapons weren't brought in till the last few days. And that was to defend the Gurdwara. At that time, it was a holy day. Sant Bindravala was there, teaching, preaching, as he usually did. Okay? Now, as far as I'm concerned, I was brought up in this country, I was born here, and sanctuary is any holy place. For an army to go in bombarding it with bullets and shells, there's going to be retaliation, is there not? Mm. People do die, but the first bullet was actually fired by the army. Now, this is not about Hindus, this is not about Sikhs, this is about what the central government at that time was doing. All the state wanted was proper water, proper um, electricity, power to the fields and so forth, right? Which was being brought in, in bits and drabs, right? So people started rebelling, saying, look, we need to become a separate state from and be ruled by our own parliament in Jandigarh. Mm. Things escalated. Now, in any community, there are good people and there are bad people. Bad people will use good people's names to bring about destruction. Unfortunately, Bindravala was brought into this. Okay? Mm. Now, the thing is, it's not Hindus, it's not Sikhs. It is central government that has to be looked at. Central government, from from as far as, as I can see, has always been corrupt and has always held the Sikh community back. Sikhs go for jobs. They're not allowed jobs. Not if you, you need to really see what is going on. It's OK for people like myself to talk on radio. But what is really going on, you've got to be there to know what is happening. My sister was in Delhi with her younger son, visiting family. The how only, long, sorry, how long ago are we talking? This, mean, but, was, this was actually when Delhi was, um, when people started fighting and killing. Right, so the, the tail end of 1984, the November, 84, October, November, right, right yeah. I remember that day because at that time my friend phoned me saying that Indra Gandhi had been shot. And my words were, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm, I, was, I was having my appendix removed, so I was in a lot of pain as it was. And my words were, when you pick up a stick, 
somebody's going to pick up a stick against you. Mm. Jess, unfortunately, we are we've run out of time. I know, but thank you. But thank let you. me explain. No, no, no I, I'm not. I'm not going to be able to give you enough time, unfortunately, because we've only got 45 minutes left of this hour. I want to speak to Narvinda, who got in contact with us from Wolverhampton. Uh, Narvinda, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nahal. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for calling in. What would you like That's to say? That's OK. Um, I, I'm really sorry to the first caller, firstly, for what she's been through. And um, although I can't, I'm an expert at what happened, I grew up in England. Um, we we freak, frequently went to the Punjab, and I just remember being scared because from Delhi, because you couldn't go from Umbrasar back then, from Delhi onwards, you'd be constantly stopped by the police. And as a child, it's it's just quite scary, and you just don't know why it's happening. But then as you grow older, you start researching and looking into what actually happened. And, and to be honest, my main concern is it's not about religion. It's about the, the human rights violations that took place and how and how you know not much was actually done about what happened and what people went through was horrendous and the fact that there was a media blackout and nobody was allowed to report or um, you know Red Cross weren't allowed access I, I just think that's awful and it's it actually makes me really sad although I've not had anyone directly related to me that was affected by it I, I just think it's awful being a Sikh and being a human. Okay. Well, Vrinda, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for sharing that. And lots of similar views have come through this morning. Uh, Sunny Hundle, uh, author of India Dishonoured, journalist and blogger, welcome to the show. Also, of course, from Basics of Sikhi, Jagaraj Singh, welcome to the show as well. Morning. And to both of you. Thank you for coming in Thanks today. Thanks, uh, We also, of course, have uh, Sarabjit Singh from Rajwana TV as well with us in our studios in Birmingham. Sarabjit, very warm welcome to the show. Thank you, Neil. Nice to meet you. Um, Sarabjit, if I can start with you. Um, yep. Tell me, is there a disconnect between older Sikhs and younger Sikhs when it comes to issues around 1984? Is there unity? I think when we talk about the issue of unity or disunity, I think it's more of the approach that's been taken. Mm. Um, so is there a difference in approach? I think you? there is a difference in approach. And, and I'm not and I'm, I'm not going to lump everyone in the same group. No, quite. But, but, but with a lot of the older generation, there's this um, sort of culture of waving a kurban in the air and, you know, shouting out, down, down, India government, without actually giving a full rationale as to what's happened, why it's happened, and how it continues to happen. Um, which is why I think people like myself and, you know, like Jagrad, and, and, and many others out there feel that we as British Sikhs who are educated, born and bred here, who are sort of, who live in a civil democratic society, use those skills to try and get out what, what's actually happened because for 30 years the story still hasn't come out and, and, and a lot of stuff that's been peddled for 30 years continues to be peddled, which is, which is why we think we need to use our expertise to tell the story. And that's not to say that the older generation, um, they failed. They haven't failed. They used what was you know, what the tools that they had, which is jump in cars and do some protests. But and also as well, Sarabji, just to be yeah. clear as well, of course, and um, perhaps the older generation were fighting against racism in a way that of a younger course. generation doesn't have to. They were preoccupied with, with getting jobs and houses for people like of you course. and me. Of course. That we could grow up. So they, they, they didn't have the time. Now, luckily, we live in a situation now where Sikhs have fought for a lot of rights that they have in this country and are very well regarded in mm -hmm. this society. Yeah. So now you have the time and you have the voice. Of course. And and after we started Rajwana TV, Nihal, uh, um, an article came out in the in the Hindu, which is, I think, India's second uh, largest national newspaper. Mm. And they were talking about the impact of Rajwana TV and some of the other diaspora um, sort of... Uh, and how were you described, by the way? Well, it, it's, it's, quite, it's quite funny. I was described as a, as a sort of a suave... Um, articulate speaker who doesn't wave a gurban in the air and doesn't shout Joe Boli Soni Hal out, you know, that, that, not that there's anything wrong with that, but he's actually talking in a logical manner. And in that article, it says that the police and the authorities are, thinking, are finding it hard to combat this new arena this new sort of cyber uh, arena where we're sort of, get, sort of getting our point across. For too long, they've been able to label us terrorists and, and extremists in their media, state-owned media. But now that we've got our own media in our own hands, we've got sort of interactive, we've got, um, we've got the internet to our hands, we can start telling the story. And they were saying in the last line of the article, it said, what's worrying is that even normal Sikhs are following the logic. Now, why would a journalist be so alarmed that people are following some kind of logic? Um, 
Um, so I, I don't think that we're doing anything radical. I don't think we're doing anything new. What we are doing is using the, the tools of the time um, to tell the story. And I think it's way more effective than perhaps standing on stages and cursing a government um, with, with just slogans. Jagraj Singh uh, from Basics of Sikhi, um, do you agree with much of what Sarajit Singh has said in terms of the different approach now and that perhaps the approach that younger Sikhs such as yourself are employing is a more effective one? No, absolutely. I almost feel like all the points I wrote down in paper when I sat down, he's just kind of been able to S- see Sarajit, you can apologise to, uh, <laughs> to Jagraj <laughs> for taking all these points. All the, out of my wind. Uh, the, the thing is, though, um, absolutely, the Sikhs nowadays are approaching things systematically. Um, they're coming with education, with logic, because, and also I think with PR, um, the Indian government has a massive PR machine. Propaganda was extreme. 984 is a very divisive issue uh, amongst the Sikhs. Um, you've seen today people calling and saying, I am a Sikh and I think it's wrong for you to discuss this. I was listening outside. So this is very divisive. It's never happened before. Well, just opinions about but we've had, uh, Janelle Bindramala itself within the Sikh community. Mm-hmm. Clearly, Indeed, oh, we've, had, very, very we've had three genocides. Um, and the first two, we knew who the enemy was and we knew what we had to do about it. This third one came with a massive amount of propaganda and actually left us confused about who had done what to us and who was to blame. So I think part of what we have to do now as young Sikhs and what we're trying to do actually is to combat that propaganda and explain exactly what happened using factual research. So Hajinder Singh with his book, myself, we've got a 12-week course that we teach which starts from Guru Nanak and then ends up with now. And we've put up all the research, all the recent ones we've been talking about from 1925 to now. And like the movie you were talking about. The fact is that we've been told this is a Hindu Sikh issue when it wasn't. We've been told it's a separatist issue when it wasn't. What it was about is about suppressing a bunch of Sikhs who had always tried to get freedom for the common person in India. So I think the agenda is very different from what the agenda has been set. It's not really about... Uh, it's about... Look, I'll give you an example, yeah? Indians really enjoy the fact that Sikhs fought for freedom in the first in the against the British, right? Obviously, they recognise that ninety percent of the sacrifices were given by, by Sikhs. So it's great when they're fighting for Indians. It's great when they fight against Indira Gandhi's emergency in nineteen seventy seven. Again, brilliant. Sikhs are are hailed as uh, bastions of democracy. But when they start fighting for their own rights, oh no, we can't have that. But you can't take freedom loving people and only ask them to fight for your freedom. They will fight for everybody's freedom. And I think this is what the issue here well, is about. Well, that's what the, a, 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 an Anandpur mm. Saib resolution does make, um, because I, I read it yesterday, actually, that it, it, it does talk about all minorities, doesn't yeah, it, yeah, in yeah. India? It talks about religious minorities across India. Sunny Handel. Um, Sunny, this disconnect, do you see that what um, both Jagraj and Sarabjit are saying about a more measured approach... Do you recognise that amongst young Sikhs or do you think that there is a, a, an element of extremism creeping into the debate amongst young Sikhs? Because that's something that's been voiced by older Sikhs to this mm. show before. No, I, I think there's definitely an element of uh, creeping extremism within the Sikh community in the UK. And Well, actually, it's not recent. It's been there for quite a while. Um, you know, Jagraj talked about the three genocides the Sikhs have faced. Actually, there are four genocides, and the fourth one is going on right now. Which but is the drug m- epidemic. Which is the drug epidemic, but more importantly, the female feticide in India, where, you know, Punjab is one of the worst states in India. I for believe it's the worst. The actually. worst state yeah. in India for, you know, the level of a number of girls to boys. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, this is going on right now. And guess what? It's not you know, the Indian government doing it, it seeks themselves doing it to themselves. You know, it seeks themselves uh, in the drug abuse. Uh, hold on. Uh, it's the seeks themselves who are drinking alcohol. And it's, you know, it's not. And the, what frustrates me is that, that there is hardly any focus on that. And there is hardly any focus on talking about the internal social problems. How do we deal with them? How do we educate people to get out of this rut? And then also... And so the focus has become overshadowed by 1984 ever since, and there's almost hardly any intellectual but can you, space. But can you disconnect the two things? Can you say that one is not linked to the other? How is 1984 the result of what's going on in India right now? I mean, see, no, no, it's the around. other way around. It's how is the drug epidemic the result of 1984? Is the that? question. No, um, you, well, let, let Jagraj come back on well, that. We've Jagraj. made this leaflet. This is a leaflet that we've worked with the um, the Federation of Sikh Organisations to make this leaflet, which talks about pre 1984, 
1984 in November and then what's happened 1984 to now so we see this and Sarabji Singh has been a very good guy who's made videos about the invisible war on Sikhs or the faceless war on Sikhs this drug epidemic is absolutely linked to what happened before 1984 How? and after the policy is about about taking the anak the Punjabi word anak yeah, out of the Sikhs which is basically that they will stand up for freedom and, and for, for human rights and how you do that is by flooding Punjab with drugs and alcohol. And if you look at other states... Is it not its so proximity so to the government so Let me, go, let me just teach you one, so, so, I put the, this, so the things that's in the... Isn't it just, just right easier now. to get hold of drugs in Punjab than it is in Tamil Nadu <clears> simply because of its proximity to the Pakistani and Afghan border? Not only that. It's because of the freedom of drugs are allowed to flood through and there's no regulation. So, so basically... So let, let me finish. Wait, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, wait. <laughs> There's a whole point here about Indivisible War on Sikhs, and I've addressed that point about feticide in there as well, because I think Sunny's got, he he thinks I'm avoiding the issue, so I'm going to... So firstly, uh, in states where there is a lot of police presence and they don't allow female feticide to to carry on un, un, unchecked, it does, it's very low. But in Punjab, there's no restriction. Rubbish. The government doesn't care. It's rubbish. Um, secondly, when it comes to drugs, okay, very much Punjab is flooded with drug centres and the police don't crack down on drug dealers. That's rubbish. Can I, can I just interject for a second? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. And afterwards, sorry, we've got T. Share Singh, who's the Canadian Sikh from SikhChic.com, also on the line, who's in Ontario in Canada. T. Share Singh, we will come to you in I, a I moment. I want to respond to okay. what yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll just let Sarabjit come back in. Sarabjit, sir. Okay, thanks, Neil. Um, when we talk about the legacy of uh, Operation Blue Star, during the 1980s, when we were asking for civil and human rights, where was the alcohol problem then, or the drugs epidemic, the farmer suicide, the female feticide, the cancerous water, the uranium poisoning, the unemployment? Where were these problems? I mean, this is where we talk about the legacy. Not only did uh, the Indian government use the full might of the armed forces to crack down on what they perceived as Sikh separatism, but by 1995, when it sort of assumed that they'd uh, sort of cracked down on militancy and got rid of it, this new faceless war came in because India needed to come into the 21st century. They needed to be seen as a democratic civil country. So they thought rather than keep firing bullets and throwing Sikh bodies into the river, why not wage a different war? <laughs> where, yeah, listen, listen to what. So, OK, if you talk about alcohol, let's just go with the alcohol. There are more government owned liquor stores in Punjab than there are government owned schools. So That's is quite, anyone but, forcing but, but, the Sikhs to no, drink no, that? No, 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 no exactly, interest. exactly. Sonny, okay, so, okay. So, 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 no, but also, but also, so, wait a minute, but also, but what was it? Sarabji, Sarabji, the Jagraj, one second, one uh, black second. Black people in America. Jagraj, Jagraj and, 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 and Sarabji, the, there has been, of course, um, many, many Sikhs who have great issue with the uh, amount of alcohol-related songs there are out there representing the culture. So is there much more of a... Predilection to, yeah. to, to drink. What stops Sikhs drinking? What stops Sikhs drinking is Sikhism. Mm. Yes, right? it's, 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 it's being Ji. baptized right, as so a Sikh. Yes, so of course. Sanjay yeah. Singh Ji was the one of the people that was stopping Sikhs yeah, from drinking. I mean, you can so by getting rid of the preachers, anybody who stood up for for Sikhi post nineteen eighty four or even before nineteen eighty four, if they stood up, but there are still Gurdwaras in the Punjab that will clearly say there are still plenty of Amritari Sikhs in Punjab who will clearly say you should not drink. Indeed. But, so why are the young but people not it, listening to but them? The, but this is it's, it can't just be a one thing. You can't just pick up one thing that alcohol and then say no, oh well, Sikh, it's Sikhs fault. The no. thing is, is Sikhism is being made. Firstly, Punjabi is being attacked. So Sikhs aren't getting into Sikhism because Punjabi is being attacked. Punjabi is now seen as an uncultured language. So if you take the language of... of, of but by who? Sorry, is this a government conspiracy? I don't of understand. Course oh, okay. Oh, yes, it is a government conspiracy. Let's only come back. I mean, look, I'm but, sorry, but, sorry, but you sorry, there has been, just very quickly, there has been, has there not, um, a great deal of grievances, and this is not a government issue, but the way, for instance, Sikhs have been represented in Bollywood for many years sure. as as joke characters, as buffoons. Yeah. And, and so, I've seen so, so is, but, so, in, yeah. so is no, it part sure. of the psyche of India to represent Sikhs in a negative way, do you uh, think? It is a part of psyche of the Indian establishment to portray every minority in a negative way. Dalits are not treated well, Muslims are not treated well, Christians are not treated well. It goes across the board, right? So that's the first point. I mean, I'm not Bollywood is never represented. So you do of, admit then that there is a, yeah, there yeah, is yeah, a state yeah, yeah. I, I've never liked oppression Bollywood. of minorities. I've never liked Bollywood but you know what Nihal has never affected my life I can happily ignore Bollywood and still educate myself and you know get involved in yeah. issues that I'm concerned about what frustrates Sonia, me hold on one second one second can yeah. you actually listen yeah. to the one, debate please uh, the point I'm trying to make is that Sikhs are very good uh, Punjabis generally have become fantastic at being uh, playing the victim and saying everything is a government conspiracy and actually you know there are other parts of India which have done worse Bihar is a lawless state Uttar Pradesh is, is, is in a horrible state so it's not like the government 
central government does not have that much power to have this conspiracy to make Sikhs drink alcohol, to force drug abuse, to force domestic violence on them, to fact uh, to to force female feticide. That is part of our own culture, and that is part of what how these people have developed, and that is part of the political uh, failure on on behalf of the Akali Dal, the local uh, political parties there, the people there who dumbs themselves go around calling themselves Sikhs, you know, uh, who have perpetuated this. I mean, only today I, there was I, a video I, 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 uh, at, the, at, the Guru, uh, at the Golden Temple this morning of uh, a fight breaking out and people are waving swords at each other. I mean, this well, is... Can the- I just take issue with that? I've heard a text about that from somebody. They said that some of the people in Punjab, when they checked the people that actually wave swords about, turned out they were actually pretending to be Sikhs. These uh, are people this that was in the gold- No, no, this yeah, was so, in the Golden Temple yeah, we're talking so about. What? The procession. So what? Do, you think, so, do you think people no, can't I dress mean, up as Sikhs? Yeah, but of course, but of course, um, that would assume, of course, just like any other group, um, that there can't be infighting within groups, and we know, no, but, just mm. like in any other group, there's yeah, exactly. always infighting. Well, it's 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 even, Lord Indajit, so, even Lord so, Indajit Singh said to me because I made a comment about if you put a Sri Lankan on his own in a room, there'll be an argument, and he laughed and said the same thing we but, say about but Sikhs. Let, but I'm not. This Sandeep must admit this that there is actually a group Sunny. within within the RSS. There is actually a group which have taken Amrit. Okay, they wear turbans, they wear beards, and they're part of the RSS. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. And okay. I'm not a big so, fan so of the RSS. So how can it be that we can say Sikhs have done this? Okay, can I just stop you on the RSS? Can I just stop? Can I just stop this uh, this discussion between two brothers here? Quite literally, two brothers. I was about to go to our gentleman in Canada, but he's now just fallen off the line. So I can continue. Can I? Can okay. it's quite interesting. Can I just say that? Sorry, Jit. Can I just mention a point? Sorry, my friend. It's just that 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 Sunny and Jagraj, for those people listening, are actually brothers. Yeah. And you are on two completely different. No, we're not completely different sides. I, I agree with all the problems Sonny's Sunny's been raising. They are the problems that we need to address. And we are trying to address them as base of Sikhi. But it's trying to educate Sikhs about Sikhi. So it's not the fact that Sikhs aren't addressing these issues. Yes, quite. People they are, are getting into Sikhism no, 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 from no, the things, uh, the works he, that we're doing. Okay, let's bring Sarabji. Sarabji. I actually, I mean, uh, you know, the fact that they're brothers. I agree with what Sonny's saying. I mean, literally brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with Sonny in the fact that nobody uh, from the Indian government brings a big bad hand down to an individual and makes them drink a glass. See, nobody ties a noose, a noose around a farmer and makes him commit suicide. Nobody is injecting a big bad hand from the government. He's injecting an individual with drugs. The problem this is, is that the majority, according to you know articles from like the New York Times, is that the majority of these people who are taking drugs, who are drinking this alcohol, are completely illiterate and they're unemployed. Yeah. Where is the outside investment in Punjab to make sure that these people are not only literate but given jobs? A perfect example of this, Nihal, is where you're from in London. I'm sitting in Birmingham. You must have run a story about this. There were people who we call you know freshies, illegal Im- immigrants who came from Punjab. They ran, swam, skipped, hopped, jumped into lorries to come to London and sleep under bridges and catch diseases. They were catching diseases, Nihal. Yes. They would rather do that than stay in Punjab. So what is so bad in Punjab that is making our youth run from there and sleep under bridges in the UK? A lack of opportunity, I'd say. Of course, and where does that lack of opportunity come from? Well, I mean, it partly comes from Sikhs themselves. I mean, look, I, I think it's it's useful to say, you know, that the Indian government has not done anything to help Sikhs, but the central government in India actually is really weak anyway. And, you know, the point is is that uh, other s- states in India have also done badly, but other states have done really well. For example, take Kerala, one of the poorest states in the country, but highly educated. The the level of uh, female feticide there is so low that actually there's more women than men in that state as it should be. But in Punjab, there is an action aid report 2009. In some villages, they found there were as many as 300 girls to a thousand boys. Yeah, yeah. Female feticide, uh, the fact that we know uh, there is a Massive Punjab domestic has the violence. most amount of illegal abortion clinics and ultrasound clinics in the rest of India. Right. Sony. And that, yeah, exactly. And those are private clinics. This is not and a they, government that, that conspiracy. Is, My point yeah. is, it's the mentality that makes people want okay. to do this. So and I'll just interject. There's a program by, in, in India which is called um, uh, Satya Mev Jayate yeah? by Amir Khan. You must have heard about that. Yeah. It's been a big phenomenon. He did a whole series on female feticide. And in that series on female feticide, he looked at Punjab specifically, and I, and it's not that because we're hiding it's one away of the from the worst issue. states right. in the country. But the point he raised there was is that in places in Punjab, 
Okay, the where the government had stepped in and the law, the police had stepped in to actually crack down on some of the on and enforce the law of India, it had worked. But mostly the police were not worried about this because it was Sikh kids that no, were being but, killed. No, no, no. Wait. So look, no. Again, this is a conspiracy theory, right? But it's the, true. No, it, it, you see, the thing is, in India. Let me let me make the point. Sorry, let me just respond to that quickly. Look, the government, the law in India is rubbish at enforcing anything across the board, which goes all the way from. Uh, checking doctors all the way to you know uh, uh, stopping dowry it's incumbent on Sikhs to change the mentality so that people are not going to villages and burying the daughters in matkas you know that's what they they do they, it's I, I wrote it in my book and it was called um, kabutri something it was doing killing the kabutri or something like that the, you know and the point is there is a whole mentality of doing this and it's got nothing to do with the number of clinics because they are simply uh, you know responding to the demand yeah, okay. Okay, so you know, you know, guys, I, 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 I want to bring T-Share singing because he's back, been waiting he for some time now. Okay. Um, a Canadian Sikh from SikhChic.com who's in Ontario in Canada right now. Uh, T-Share Singh, very warm welcome to the BBC Asian Network. Thank you, thank you. You've been listening to the uh, gentleman speaking uh, so far about issues very much pertaining to what's going on in the Punjab now. Yes, but I have. But tell me, as someone who runs SikhChic.com, um, and especially in Canada, of course, which has a large diaspora like we do here in the UK. Tell me, what do young Sikhs tell you about what they want to happen? Well, it, what they know is that 1984 is not 30 years away. It is still alive. It is still raw. It is still relevant for young and old, for, for, for Sikhs across the board. It is something that uh, has remained very important, relevant, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, continues to be very much part of our lives and will remain so until... Um, the justice has been obtained. Sikhs are very human rights oriented, justice oriented, and until and unless we make sure that the rogue element in India that has turned and has always been turned against minorities, against women, against uh, anybody who does not cater to the to the mainstream uh, uh, corrupt elite, um, you know, uh, uh, until that is corrected until democracy is truly practiced in India. Uh, Sikhs will fight and, and Sikhs across the board, regardless of where they stand on the spectrum, uh, regardless of uh, what views they have, they're united in one thing and one thing in particular, and that is that justice needs to be delivered on 1984 and and uh, and then the rest will flow from it. Um, Sarabji, can I ask you about an issue that Paul Upple brought up, the yeah. MP, when he said that a young Sikh he spoke to said, you know, there'll be no closure, we want nothing to do with Hindus. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of division, what are your feelings about this, the more extreme end of, right. of the debate it's from just, the Sikh community? Right, no, so it's a pertinent question. I think it just depends on what someone's definition of being extreme is, because as far as I'm concerned, the only thing I've, I've seen about, you know, regarding extremism and Sikhism, with the connection with the both, is that we've uncovered extreme human rights abuses, even as British Sikhs. Do you not think it an extreme view that to wish to disassociate associate yourself from Hindus? Of course, and, and to be honest, if you look at the so basic... So that would be extremism then? No, no, but that's somebody's uh, a viewpoint. That's an If you look at a, the collective or the Sikh uh, philosophy, it's but all that's about... that's how Muslim extremism is defined, by yeah. extreme views. Therefore, you're willing to say that um, extremism is extreme but, but, uh, abuses but, but, of human rights. Of course it is, yeah. absolutely, but equally, you do not... Surely you do have to look within extreme elements within your own communities oh. as well and do something to, to no, not yeah, pacify them. Yeah, so. yeah, Sikhs are fighting extremism. They are not being extremists. Well, there are I mean, examples you look of Sikh India, extremism. What is happening, what has happened in 84 and what is happening now, we are fighting extremism. The country has been taken over but, by, but, by but, but, but Tisha Singh, you're in Canada where, of course... The Canadian oh, government felt that there were Sikh extremists, Sikh extremists who downed an Air India jet. 
That was well, not. That was it, not true. They it, didn't but, do it. They well, were yeah, paid off. That, I think no, they weren't. The bomb maker a, was a Sikh, and he was convicted of it. He recently lost an appeal. Well, if you read uh, Zuhair Kashmiri and Neil Macandrew's book, Soft Target. No, I'm, I'm going yeah. from what this Canadian government have yeah. said about this. Canadian government was involved in that. Successfully prosecuted. The Canadian government were involved in that. Predominantly Canadian citizens involved in that. Very few Indians were involved in that. The Indian government was involved. No, the Indian government intelligence was involved. I think this is this is a side debate. Look, no, no, the side debate. No, Sonny, I think you're taking it onto a side debate because you want to keep t- talking about okay we need we do need to talk about current issues but the the the, the question that Nihal is asking us and I think this is what the debate is about why are we who are outside of India harping on about this you know why Nihal we talk about never forgetting a genocide mate they don't allow us to forget this genocide sure. and I'm not this I'm not actually no 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 to a country where if the head of the Cleveland police is misusing his credit card and racking up a bill for £80,000 in four years, he is suspended and he is arrested for theft and... Sorry, mi- yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, okay. sorry to no, interrupt no, you, but yeah, I mean, we're listen. talking about a country in India where a third of the MPs in the Lok Sabha have <laughs> yeah, some kind of, of criminal exactly. investigation under it. Of course, and, I mean, and, and, and yeah. you'll ask me about my state in Punjab. Do you know who is in charge of but, law and order? Can I Samir bring you Sini. back to this idea about... Because what the reason I asked that question is because someone tweeted me this morning after I said how sad it was to see what was going on in the Golden Temple in Punjab today. And they said to me, we'll never get what we want unless we're united. Mm -hmm. And that is why I asked that question, Sarabjit, is you as a young Sikh, Mm -hmm. and especially someone with quite some influence, as my Twitter timeline will attest to (laughs) once you started tweeting me the other day, um, someone with some influence, does it not worry you that divisions within the Sikh community itself will get in the way of you achieving the aims that you wish to achieve? Division will always be there, Nihal, because not everybody has the same thinking. What of course, we, what, and you're what, not a homogenous group, but what I'm course. saying is, how do you bring unity? Education. This, is, this is how, this is, Nihal, this Education. is why we bought this these YouTube channels, like what Jagraj is doing myself and other uh, groups out there who are doing great work, is to bring about that education. I, myself, 15 years ago, used to think that Santa Pindaran, while he was a terrorist, and he was to blame for what happened in 84. Only when I'd done a histi- history degree and had done my dissertation on Operation Blue Star did I start uncovering the facts. And I thought to myself, if if we can bring these facts that have been hidden from the public public eye to the the, the, the Sikh public or the public uh, at large, then we can see some major changes. And, and the response that we've had, I have had people who've said that it was right what happened, the killings were right, and they've suddenly watched some of these videos and thought, hang on, I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know I this mean, was happening. I I've had a situation myself where people said to me, look, I was anti-Hindu sure. uh, and, I, and I hated Hindus and now I don't. But, so but, the thing is... So is just, that, to be, just to be very so just clear, to address just, that point yeah, about to, being... The, about, the, the, the person who question. approached Paul Uppel, right, so what whole, would you say to that young Sikh? I would say to that to person, be. listen, the, the, the issue that is in your head is the same issue that was raised by the Indian government back then. They made it about divide and conquer. This was not a Hindu Sikh issue. This was a human rights issue and it's been made into a Hindu Sikh issue and therefore by educating, if you look at the people that are involved in education, every single one of the people that I know involved in education does not preach against Hindus. What they say is learn about it and you realise it was more than this. So actually it's the propaganda, mm. it's only going to be and counted okay, by Let's sure bring are... Sunny back in, let's bring Sunny back in because both of you roughly uh, agree with each other, Jagaraj and uh, Sarabjit. Sunny. Well... What frustrates me about this is that the debate uh, that, oh, and that the 1984 overshadows all debate within the Sikh community. And there is no uh, discussion about actually how 1984 has stopped development, intellectual development, uh, social development of Sikhs since then and what's but going that, on right but, now. But is, but that, is that because, for instance that the Sikh community hasn't had its Nuremberg trials in well, the same way that the Jewish community has been able to move on to a certain degree because they have seen the perpetrators of the crimes committed against them. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. true. I, I, I think there's a lot of Sikhs... Well, who, has it, ha, who, who has been brought to justice then for what no, happened? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not denying that well, the Indian isn't. government... No, no, no. Uh, but no, there's a separate question. The question is, ha, is the community unable to move on and... Is there justice being delivered? So I'm not saying that the two are the same questions. Can you separate the two? Yeah, because I'm saying that not every Sikh is uh, constantly thinking about 1984 and constantly thinking about, you know, what happened then, 30 years ago. So I'm saying that there are people who want to move forward and want to have an intellectual debate about what can we do to uh, uh, better Sikhs uh, now and where do we go from here? And that debate is never had. But reconciliation, Nihal, means nothing without an admission of guilt. No, but this... Wait, wait. 
wait, wait. Who, you, you know, who? We're, we're talking about the Indian government of here. Of course. So, okay. ha, ha, so do you expect, am, but there I'm were individuals about, involved. Uh, hold on. No, I'm no, talking no. about a different issue, though. No, no, Listen no. Listen to my no, point no. I'm trying to make. Well, I'm let, saying okay, let's within the Sikh point, community, within, what frustrates me is that within the Sikh community, there is no other political debate other than 1984. Right, okay. This is a similar... That's not true. How much has been involved in the Sikh community anyway? Well, last week, last week, for instance... I do a lot of politics, and I follow a lot of the politics, and my point is that everything that happens almost always comes back to India in 1984. So basically the turban issue in France and other issues that, you know, our Sikh leadership have dealt with. 1984, I'll tell you why 1984 is still a major issue. It because but, because know, we but you're feeding into my Sunday, point. Sunday, no, 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 Let Sarabjit finish his point yeah. first. Go on. The, the reason why um, 1984 is such a huge uh, topic still is because not only have the perpetrators, uh, this, sure. this culture of impunity, this culture of impunity still exists. Yeah. Mm. And and in two days, Nihal, we will be in uh, Hyde Park doing a rally. I can't remember yeah. the last time in Hyde Park when a Sikh was shot dead, arrested or beaten or there was some civil di- uh, disorder. But I can name you three protests, peaceful protests in Punjab in the last three years where three innocent Sikhs have been shot dead by the police. Yeah, I mean, but hold on, hold on. Wait, uh, no one is denying any of this. Yeah, but so, you're so missing the point. Of to, no, okay, no, okay, all right. No, 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 I don't, you no, don't need to... Uh, the, the point uh, is, the actually, point. the 1984 so, overshadows all so, debates so about... This is, there is, and there have been, there have so, been, have there not, there have been um, Jewish people who have said exactly the same thing about what happened to the Jewish nation, that the fact that yes. you cannot be defined by it yes. as a Sikh, or you should not be defined. And there are loads of you Sikhs who don't be, want to be defined you, you, by 1984. The argument is, um, Jagaraj, is that you should be defined not only by the negatives inflicted upon your race, but by the positive contributions but, that your race and your people and your culture and your religion have given. As an organisation, for the last religion. two years, we've been criticised for not talking about 1984 enough. Right. Yeah. We've made this leaflet now after two years of being in existence. But Do prior you to find that, it then for the last two years, for the last two years, we're talking about Sikhi. Trying to teach people what is the message of Gunnar Devji. Uh, we no, make you're courses, a religious organisation, of course. But I'm not criticising you. The, the, the point, Sorry, that, Sunny, second. The point that Sunny's making here is that as far as he sees people in the political sphere, obviously people that are more politically educated, more politically active, are going to talk about 1984 because that is the major political issue facing the Sikhs. And that's but what, when it comes to spirituality... No, 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 that is not the only political problem saying? facing Sikhs, and that's my point. But there are actually major problems facing the Sikh community, and actually the focus is so much on 1984 okay, well, that all and those the point is, I take it that these guys, uh, The point that you two are trying to make, of course, is, is that they're all linked, and without one, without redress no, of one, you can't it's have redress of so one. Think that it's possible to Sunny re- seems to think that it's possible for us to deal with the alcohol and drugs issues in Punjab without addressing uh, yes. the human rights problem in Punjab. Yes. However, as um, Sarbjit was just talking just but now, you can do both, can't you? Let me just give you an example. In parallel, Sumit Seni, he is a person who has been convicted, who has killed so many Sikhs, and guess what he is right now? The DGP of Punjab Police. Just passing <laughs> last year. Okay, was so that so how, how is it possible to for us alcohol. to go? How is it possible for us to even? For example, the organisation I was working with twelve years ago when I went to India, Fateh, they were involved in working a. So how does that increase tr- female free decide? Just in. Just let me. Mean, just, well, let me say it then. Yeah, yeah, you, just let me. So, speak. for example, okay, if you if you if I go to Punjab now and I start preaching about Sikhi. Let's just say I just stick to what I do. Japji Sahib, Guru Granth Sahib Ji, let's learn about Sikhi. Let's go back to us, Guruji's mission. We made a video saying even a, a, a ch- person who kills their daughter is no longer a Sikh. So people that come into Sikhi, they will stop drinking alcohol, they will stop doing drugs, and they will stop killing their daughters because that is what Sikhi is preaching. However, you can't <laughs> preach Sikhi in Punjab. Okay. If I went to Punjab, I'd get killed. Okay. I'll tell you now. So, no, then, 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 so, then, so then who are the Sikhs in the Golden Temple? Because presumably they're currently preaching Sikhi, aren't they? No, if you look at the Sikhs in the UK, if you look at if you ask Sikhs abroad... Are you saying there's a purer form of Sikhi being being preached here the in moment, the UK than in the Punjab? Absolutely. 100% Sikhs from Punjab come here and there say... There may be you know Sikhs what? in the Harmanda Sub who would I, disagree no, with do you. A poll. <laughs> do a poll. Sikhs from Punjab come here and they tell us Sikhi is alive here, it's not in Punjab. Okay, okay all right. Okay. Okay. Well, no, no, I want to bring Manjeet and in because Manjeet's got... Sorry, Sarabjeet. Okay. Manjeet has just got in contact with us as a Sikh who's born in Delhi. Uh, Manjeet, hello. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What would you like Thanks to say? Thanks for taking my call. And I'm not a good speaker, but I haven't heard your program, but I want to give my point of view. You're most welcome, Anji. Yeah, I'm a Sikh, born in Delhi, and did my education all up to graduation. I'm an accountant here. Before this Sikh drama started, these people called Khalistani Sings, we were respected so much in Delhi. There was no fight between anywhere, any other people when they see any Sikh standing there. There was no 
need to put a no smoking sign when Singh was there. Manjeet, can I just ask you, have you and read, uh, can, Manjeet, can I just ask you a question? Have you read the Anandpur Sahib resolution? No, I, I'm not interested. I'm just saying how yeah, he's not I feel. That's great. Yeah. I feel so bad, so what if he hasn't? I don't understand. He doesn't understand what Sikhs are talking about. I've, this was the propaganda. I've he's bought the propaganda. Oh, I see. Everyone's he's bought the brainwashed propaganda. apart from you guys. Okay, let Manjeet so finish his part. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you listen to the guy? Let, 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 let Manjeet finish. I do wish to get in the way of this brotherly vibe that's going on here, but Manjeet wants to speak. Manjeet, go on. Yeah, let me speak. They, they can talk 24 hours, you will get nowhere. But my view is, we Sikh, Sikh people have lost respect due to this frightening terrorist Bindrawala people. And uh, this, when this blue water started, they, we were having, if that uh, Bindrawala was proper Guru Gobind Singh Singh, he should have come out and surrender it before, yeah? But he he had more ammunition than Indian Army. Come on! <laughs> well, yeah, did, did, I think that's, 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 that's a bit of a stretch. Did, was, did, he have, did he have more? We did he, were his weapons stronger than ten VG <laughs> and the battle he's tanks that weigh one ton each and can fire thirty miles, no, no. miles away? Battle tank came after when yeah. they saw what he has got. Okay. There was no battle tank outside. There was no... Okay, um, that's fine. Okay, okay. Ni Nihal. Uh, you know, you know so, Sarabji, let's bring Sarabji okay. back in. Go on, Nihal, Sarabji. Nihal, what's particularly galling, and I think this is why it's quite pertinent to talk about British Sikhs. Yeah. Imagine the Prime Minister of nearly a billion people, and after the, the, the documents came out of uh, British collusion uh, uh, regarding Operation Blue Star, you know the letter that Indira Gandhi wrote to Margaret Thatcher in the aftermath? Uh, which she, were, well, can I just say that David Cameron has come out and said one military official was sent yeah, out yeah. and no... None of the advice that the military official was given was, was taken. Was was taken. taken. Yeah. But so can, just I just make, can I just make this point in the letter? Indira Gandhi says that those of all the malefactors, those who wear the religious garb are the most dangerous. If nothing else, um, Nihal, if we prove nothing else, if Indira Gandhi, the prime minister, is criminalizing an appearance, she is characterizing an appearance with criminality, what do you think those Sikhs faced? Can you imagine any other country, the Prime Minister of any other country saying those Sikhs who have a turban and a beard and have an affinity to their faith are a criminalised group? Well, I mean, Winston Churchill said a lot of things about Indians in general before, uh, what did he say? Indians are not fit for civilization or something like that. Well, so that's fine, but it, we, it, how many Indians were living in, in England at the time when he said it? Was he brutalising those Indians? Was he using draconian laws like National Security Act, TARDA? Sir, Sir, Jee, when, was the, Sir Jee, when was the last time you visited the Punjab? The last time I visited was in 2009. And, and how did you find it? I mean, just as someone walking through the streets, yeah. I, I don't know if you're in Jalandhar or Chandigarh or you were okay. out in the Pind, where, how did you find it? How did you feel? I was particularly heartbroken um, because even in my village alone, there are a few families who have lost people during Operation Woodrow's, something that was mentioned in the aftermath of, uh, of Blue Star. And they've never seen those kids again. There, there are people in my village who lost people during Operation Blue Star and there's not even been a coroner's report or a death certificate to certify that they died there. You know, they haven't even got that closure. There are drug addicts in my village. I defy any, any Punjabi out there to say they don't know somebody who's a drug addict. Can I ask you, what are they doing on the ground? Because, of course, it doesn't need to be one or the other. It doesn't need to be, does it? Mm. Unless we find justice, uh, we can't do anything about of the course. drugs. What, what is being done by Punjabis such as yourself? And of course, you yeah. don't live there, so it's difficult for you to be there on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. But yeah. what are they doing to combat What is, Nihal? This? You know why it's difficult? And it's something that Jagraj has said. I have been told by a well-wisher, and you know, that don't step foot back in Punjab after you've started Ajwana TV and the videos that I've made. All I've talked about is a wholesale genocide and probably covered 1% of it. I have been labelled an extremist. Even on one of your shows, Nihal, last year, somebody phoned in and that said, said Sabjit Singh Rajawana TV is radicalizing the youth. Uh, Nihal, you may have seen some of my videos. I don't point to any particular race of people or religion to say they, this is the reason why it's happened. I just simply am exposing a system that has killed a minority of people. And for that, I don't think I am welcome in India. And if I land in Rajasansi Airport in Amritsar, I don't think anybody is going to see me again. Can I tell you something recently? Wait, so to back this up, I, went, I was involved with a Gurdwara committee person talking to them. He said, listen, if you want to walk the path of truth within the Gurdwara community, within the, within the Gurdwara committees, forget going to India. Okay. Forget going to India. If you want to change Gurdwara, you want to change the Sikh, Sikhi, then you're, at, at, you're risking the Indian government killing you. Okay. Um... 
I mean, I think that uh, Gudwara over here or a problem in itself is on let alone India, but that that's a separate debate. I mean, uh, Nihad, before I came onto the show, I actually spoke to the producers and I said, you know, it'd be really good if instead of me, there was a woman there. And what was instructive to me was, uh, and I got told by the producers here, that so many people were afraid to come onto the show and talk or were afraid of speaking out. That's very true. That is very true. Women were afraid of speaking out and saying something controversial because they thought they would get into intimidated, get threats from people. There is a macho culture within the Sikh community in the in the UK too. And I saw this uh, most importantly in 2005 when I was standing up for Gopri Bhatti who wrote the play which they wanted to shut down Beshti. because they claimed, basically because they claimed that it was insulting to Sikhs. And, and at that time there were loads of people making loads of rubbish, you know, slurs about her. So, you know, this... <laughs> What frustrates me time. is what frustrates me is that even within the Sikh community here, there is no discussion about the macho culture, about the fact that these people go around intimidating people. I mean, just take those people who are going around int- stopping uh, marriages between Sikhs and non-Sikhs at Gurdwara. Yeah, but Sunny, what about, what about day, the, days. what about groups like the BNP or the EDL? Are they reflective of the indigenous white population? But, but but we have uh, p- white people in the UK who go out and protest so, so against that, the EDL so, okay, and the so, BNP. So, so, okay. How many Sikhs have done that? We well, have actually. We've got Sikhs against the EDL. No, I'm not talking about against the EDL. I'm talking about the Sikhs okay. within. It's It's interesting yeah. that but the point you made, Soji, it was uh, yeah. actually essentially what you were saying is: look, there are extremists in all communities, but we don't judge entire communities. Yeah, but no one by, is by judging all Sikhs. No, no. But the interesting point is, though, is that that is an admission, Soji, is it not, that there are elements within the Sikh community that you feel are extreme? By by the same token, Nihal, we talk about this label of extremism. Extremism, even you know, in in the two hours before this show this label of extremism Santh Bin Rawal was an extremist and Mark Tully often talks about it mm. people the, often forget that the fact that they forget the fact that that man wasn't judicially but we're not talking the, about Santh no, no, Bin no, no, Rawal no, 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 Sonny listen, listen to what I'm listen. saying because I'm, I'm going to get, get to this extremist point he was simply labelled as an extremist and he was executed as one without being judicially given a verdict of okay. guilt can I no, just listen, ask you let's get back to this debate I want to get I want to get back to this debate about young British Sikhs because Rajwana uh, TV does yeah. have a huge sway over what uh, young Sikhs are. The majority of them were sending me very um, very encouraging tweets yeah. about getting you on. Mm. There were some, of course, that were abusive and, and they were, they were um, the, 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 to be fair, um, other, other Sikhs did tweet them yeah. and tell them to stop doing that. No, of course. But... but but, but people uh, move in different ways, Nihal. Well, like, well, like, quite, quite. Yeah. But you have a responsibility, don't mm-hmm. you, right, in what you put out. Now, is your, respons- is your message saying that there should be a separate homeland for Sikhs? Mm-hmm. It is saying that? Uh, the, the reason why it is saying that, and I would categorically say it does say that, is because I defy anybody to tell me what has changed in the government uh, of India, in the constitution, in their letter of the law, to make sure this genocide and the continued genocide never happens again. What has changed in that country to make sure Sikhs aren't butchered and Harmandar Sahib isn't attacked again? Uh, but that one does not. And, and, that and, doesn't and, mean that you have no, no, Sikh no, no, Can I, can no, I no. ask you realistic? Can I ask you realistically? Because of course there are there are as you, as you well know, Sarabji, As you yeah. well know, Sarabji, there yeah. are there are Sikhs, including in the uh, the people who who drew up the Anandpur. Um, side resolution mm-hmm. who did not want a separate state of course and 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 this is the key element so you're They're divided di- immediately no no we, we are divided but then there was this key key statement that if the indian army ever invade harmandar sahib with their with their uh, uh, full force then the foundation stone of khalistan will be laid and this is the popular misconception nihal Operation Blue Star wasn't conducted to get rid of Khalistanis and this horrible, stupid notion that uh, Brad has peddled on the BBC and other channels to say that Khalistan was going to be created with the help of Russia and Pakistan. Operation Blue Star created the concept of Khalistan because by taking the fight to Harmandar Sahib, the fourth most visited place in the world, a place of tranquility and peace, by taking armaments there and after Santh Pindrawali had been militarily neutralized, i.e. made Shaheed, that's when Christian Science Monitor Report said the majority of the killings happened of civilians and did those armaments go back to Delhi? Did, okay, did, well, did, well did, I've read, the, I, I mean, I've read that the Indian government succeeded in 
in making people more extreme because it, because ultimately there were plenty of people in the Sikh Ram community Rangkumar, in India who were not fans Nihal, of Bindra Mala, but they, they were made to be uh, ones uh, after. Of course, because Nihal, I thought the debate was going to be focused on the UK well, and is, the aftermath and it, well, of 84 and, and not be. exactly what Sunny's happened in 1984. I mean, we, 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 we keep on uh, going no. back to 1984. We've discussed the issue for the last two hours. Can I ask you, the point is... I keep trying to bring it back, to be fair. But you're not. Let me address the thugs issue, what Sunny raised earlier about the weddings, yeah? Okay. For example, if you're a, if you're a policeman and you want to uphold the letter of the law, of the law, are you an extremist? But if the occult, uh, let, let me ask. Let me ask. Okay. Oh, yeah, but, but wait a minute. But wait a minute. Well, it's Jack Roach, the there's law, a way of doing things, right? So the occult, oh, tuck, the occult tuck issues an edict saying that only Sikh can marry Sikh in Gurdwaras, right? right? And why that's, the that's very clear. Follow it then? That's very no true. But is the way to deal with that by throwing bricks through windows of old people, which no, is what no which one is agreeing with that? And 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 myself as well. What do you think these people do then? No, I didn't. Well, what did they, they do? What, what did they, I the didn't, letter no of the law in this country no says that. the letter of the law in this country says you do not disrupt people's and weddings and break the law. You know, no, that's okay. what you can okay. say. Okay. Speak at the same time. Sorry, yes. can I can I just say, Sonny? Sorry, Jim. Okay, Nihal, Sonny. You know this issue of please Khalistan. don't mention 1984. Please, oh, well, uh, you know, not, not just because because we want to try and keep it UK based for the last 40 seconds. Of course, of course. You know this issue of Khalistan has become a rosy, cozy word just to legitimise and demonise one community. What Khalistan done was. All it did was it was a word that took away from the major constitutional demand, citizens' rights, judicial sure. review. It'd be a terrible idea, but that's besides the point. No, no, there isn't a, there your, isn't no, a no, debate within the community about what does it mean to have a religious state. I mean, a religious states fail themselves everywhere, and they have failed, and they but will the fail Raj in the future. The Sikh was very successful. Well, <laughs> so that was a dictatorship run by uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh. It's and not the same as having a, they work really It's well. not a, a democratic uh, state. The, the point is that Israel, you can see elements of, uh, you know, where this has increased segregation, uh, loss of rights for people, loss of people rights for minorities. You see in Pakistan now with Ahmadiyyas getting killed, people for laws. All this sort of stuff happens because of people saying we need to have a, a state based on religion. Having a state based on religion is the worst idea ever. And what frustrates me is that there's no proper debate within the community also about whether having a Khalistan would be a good idea. You know, it's just okay, assumed let me that okay, we, we, we Unfortunately, we are going to have to leave it there. Gentlemen, Sarabjit and Jagraj and Sunny, thank you very much indeed for coming in today to talk about this uh, very important day and a very important weekend. So thank you very much indeed for sharing your opinions here on the BBC Asian Network. This debate shall run and run and run. Feel free to tweet me if you wish to, but try not to be abusive.